fantastic. Um, you know, this was my first time ever in the UK, and everyone was so welcoming and warm, and I felt like uh, my audiences were really receptive and asked a lot of great questions. So all in all, two thumbs up. Well, I had a week off to tour with my husband, and so when we were out here together, just touring-wise, I would have to say Bath. Bath was so beautiful. Um, but pulling it back to the tour, gosh, there were so many wonderful places. Um, but Scotland, surprisingly enough, Scotland was a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed my time there. Well, I graduated college with a degree in health, or university as it's called in the UK. And so, you know, I didn't really have any plans of writing until my husband surprised me on my 24th birthday by enrolling me in a writing class. And that was my gift. And I went to, um, I showed up at that first writing class, and everybody else in the class had graduated with degrees in literature or English, and they'd been telling stories, and they had these brilliant stories they wanted to tell, and I did not have a story to tell. And so I told the teacher, you know, I'll come every week to this eight-week writing course, but I don't have a story to tell, and I don't really feel comfortable sharing anything with the other students in the class. Then one week, our teacher gave us an assignment to write a scene showing humiliation. And for whatever reason, I was immediately struck by the memory of something that happened to me when I was in high school. I was a sophomore, so I was 16 years old, and I was sitting in my biology classroom. And I don't remember all of the specifics, but I'm thinking we were studying human reproduction because I remember my teacher pointing to me and saying, Becca, why don't you tell us the characteristics you would want in a mate? And the whole class bust up laughing, and my face was bright red, and I sat next to this really cute guy, and he was poking me in the side. Come on, Becca, tell us what you want in a man. And as you can imagine, I was just completely mortified. So I started writing the scene in my writing class about this girl, this 16-year-old girl who is sitting in her biology classroom and her teacher is asking her this same inappropriate question. And the scene became one chapter, two chapters, three chapters, and eventually an entire novel. <laughs> was it easy? No, it was really hard. I sent the first draft of Hush Hush off to literary agents in 2003, and over the next five years, I would accumulate just shy of 100 rejection letters for the book. It wasn't until 2008 that Simon & Schuster finally saw something promising and bought the book. Well, I think any time an author is successful, it's a huge surprise because that's something that I never could have anticipated, especially after receiving 100 rejection letters. You just heard no so many times that I thought it would take a miracle to get the book published. I think what hooks fans is, you know, this blend of romance and suspense and the whole psychological game readers play in their head. You know, so many people email me and say, I just could not tell the whole way through Hush Hush if Patch was good or bad, and the same thing through Crescendo. I was positive he had these secret motivations, and I knew that whatever was being displayed on the page wasn't the whole story. To aspiring writers, I always recommend that you keep a journal and write in it daily. Um, we all think we have these boring lives and nothing special happens to us, but in reality, all kinds of interesting and crazy things are going on every day, and if you write those down, you never know. One of the events that happened to you in your own life might inspire an entire story.